The first thing that happens usually is you'll be going down a tunnel. How many of you have had near-death experiences? There's always some people in the audience all over the world, you know, even no matter what the doctors and the skeptics say, this isn't real. I've run into it too many times. I know near-death experiences are real. The only difference is you don't go all the way, but you see part of it. And the classic examples, they usually show them as going through a tunnel. And as they go through the tunnel, sometimes they're met by somebody and it says, in a near-death experience, and they'll say, are you sure you want to go or do you want to go back? And they're given a choice. And it's always up to them. But as they go, they can see how beautiful it is over there. And they want to go because it is extremely beautiful. So as you're going, even through a near-death experience, they say as they go through the tunnel and they see this beautiful place, they go toward a white light. They usually see a white light. Now some of the near-death experiences people have told me about, they don't go that far, they just go up above and look down at the body, like in an operating room or an accident. But they, that they've just left the body. They haven't really having a near-death experience. But in a real near-death experience, they see a light, and they go toward that light. But in a real near-death experience, you never reach the light. You're always turned around and sent back before you get to that point. So I found out why. They'd have to, or they wouldn't be alive again. So when you really die, you go through that white light. You may call that white light God, whatever you want to call it, it's a huge energy force. So when you die, you go through that white light. And do you know you are connected with the silver cord? Most of you know that. You have a silver cord that connects your body and your soul, your spirit, the entire time you're alive. When you have out-of-the-body experiences, people can see the silver cord. But that connects you to the body the entire time you're alive. Every night, you go out of your body. That's the fun time. Because you're, the real you is the spirit, the soul. The body's what gets tired. And the real you, your spirit, would get off a board sitting around waiting for you to wake up so it can continue with what it's doing. So when the body goes to sleep, you go, the real you goes out of the body and you can do all this exploring. The same thing that happens when you die and when you go to the near-death experiences. You can go to the other side, you can see everything over there, or you can go anywhere on earth you want to go, or you can explore other planets. You do this every night. And the only way you remember it is if you're having dreams of flying or unfamiliar places. But we all do it. But in the morning then, when it's time to wake up, it's like you're reeled in because the silver cord will always bring you back to the body that you occupy. So it's like reeling you in every morning. So when you die and you go through that white light, that energy force is so strong that it cuts the silver cord at that time. The silver cord is dissolved, and that means you cannot return to the physical body. And as soon as the spark of life is gone, the physical body begins to deteriorate. There's nothing there anymore. Then you're on the other side. And they always describe it the same way. It's extremely beautiful. But there is no pain associated with death. Only the physical body experiences pain from whatever it's dying of. But the pain is left with the physical body. The minute you're out of it, there's no more pain. The soul cannot, I'm trying to figure out whether to call it the soul or the spirit, but you know what I'm talking about, the real you. It cannot experience pain. The only thing that is the equivalent of pain is remorse. 
I sh should have done it better. I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I'd done this instead. You have this feeling of regret and remorse. That's the only feeling it could be the equivalent of pain. So when you go over there, the first thing that happens is you're shown your life. You have your guides, your guardians, you have your masters, you have your elders. It's like a whole board over there, a whole council. It's a good thing somebody runs the place. <laughs> and they have all the records of everything that has ever happened to you. Kind of like a gigantic computer system. Nothing is ever lost.